So, our third and final step that we're going to review before we actually get our hands on the first ventilator, which is the servo eye, and then subsequent ventilators that we will be covering uh, as well, is the effects of changes in RAW. So remember, RAW, or airways resistance, is just the peak inspiratory pressure minus plateau pressure over flow in liters per second. So when this, when, when we look at changes in RAW, this is always going to be manifest in ways we're going to discuss, but we can only measure it when we're in volume ventilation with flow set in a square waveform, right? So that we know exactly from beginning to end what the flow is in liters per second. So that's important. But the manifestations occur regardless of what flow waveform we use or what mode of ventilation we're in. So first, if we're in volume ventilation, and we have an increase in raw, just think of the formula. So we're not changing flow. P plat is determined by the compliance of the lung. So as raw goes up, the only thing that's gonna be changing here is PIP. So uh, with the, if, if our raw goes up significantly to say 15 centimeters of water pressure per liter per second. This is 10 times the normal, right? Normal for an adult somewhere between 0.5 and 1.5, roughly depending on whose norms you're using. And so here, that's a very significant rise in raw. So what's gonna happen? We're gonna get a significant rise in PIP, right? There's not gonna be any change in plateau at all, that's determined by compliance, but we have a major change in our peak inspiratory pressure. Well, what happens if we're in pressure ventilation? So let's, um, let's move just over here, just for a second. When we look over here, we can see here we've got our PIP set at 18, okay? Notice it's a square waveform. So we've set our PIP from the beginning of inspiration to the end of inspiration. The pressure is constant. However, what happens in our lung? Well, in our lung, let's follow the first dotted line. In a normal raw, what happens is the difference between the pressure in our ventilator and our alveoli pro, pro, uh, gives us a, uh, a pressure gradient. And that pressure gradient results in flow. So we get rising alveolar pressures that continue to rise until PIP equals plot. And at the end of a pressure breath, there should be this period of no flow with, that occurs because our PIP equals plot. Okay, that's normal. But what happens when our raw goes up significantly? Okay, now it has to be, I'm describing only the significant rise in raw. And that's given here by this dashed line. And you can see that alveolar pressure is rising more slowly because for the same pressure gradient, there's more resistance to flow through the tubes. And the result is we don't get as much volume moving into the lung as fast. And the end result is by the, by the time inspiration is done, we don't have equilibration. We still have a pressure gradient, but our time is up and the ventilator cycles off. That pressure difference in pressure between PIP and PLAT means that's potential volume we would still get flow and volume entering the lungs, but that doesn't happen, and the result is a decrease in tidal volume. 